is it's gonna start to kind of hit down here, and so now you're gonna start doing a double bend, and it can start to get a little sporty. I honestly, <laughs> problem is, is that once it's got a bend in it, you can't reapply the aluminum foil. Ah, uh, right. So it's kind of you get it right or you don't do it at all. Welcome to Joyful Guitars, I'm Chris. And I'm Matt. And today, we are bending binding for a guitar. Yep, yeah, so um, the way we've been doing this traditionally, we've been using just kind of an old school bending iron, I guess that's yeah. what you call this, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's uh, it takes a long time, you can only really do one piece at a time. Um, you and only also, have two hands. Yeah. if you're Matt, and you're inexperienced in this, yeah, you, you tend to break it a lot. Now, yeah. I mean, I've, I've had better luck with some. Uh, this last batch of binding, for whatever reason, the wood had a lot more figuring in it, I think. Yeah. And so yeah, I was yeah, just, yeah. I was uh, getting ready to yeet this thing across <laughs> the shop. Listen, no, <laughs> but we're not just doing binding uh, in the traditional way, like on an acoustic guitar. We're doing our binding on our title casters now. Um, and so I kind of threw Matt and John to the wolves here and was like, listen, we're doing wooden binding yeah. on the hardest cutaway that you can humanly imagine. Good luck. <laughs> it, it presents it presents a little bit more of a challenge than yeah. just yeah your garden variety like yes. binding. So and I know that for folks at home um, who are, are interested in guitar building, especially at the hobby level, uh, if you're doing drop tops on, on electric guitars or you're doing acoustic guitars and you're just kind of like scared to do your your to bend wooden binding, you almost always by default will go to a plastic binding, mm -hmm. and that's cool. It has its place. Uh, issues with plastic binding, in my opinion, are that. Uh, it always, eventually, in time, comes delaminated because plastic and wood just they they don't get along very well. Yeah. They, the main reason is is because uh, they just shrink and expand at different rates, and over time, 50 years from now, your plastic's gonna get brittle and it's gonna look like every old Martin and Gibson you've ever seen, where the the the, the plastic starts to. Not there's anything wrong with no, that. No, it's just old plastic. <laughs> yeah. So so what we like to do is wooden binding on our guitars. Because the electric guitar has such a hard cutaway on this side, um, we've had to use non-figured wood. That's that's, that's right. the first thing. Uh, yeah. First piece of advice I would say, if you're new to this and you're wanting to bend wooden binding for either an acoustic or electric, is to find a wood that's not figured. As much as you want to use some beautiful figured koa or some uh, you know some maple like we use, you're you can do it, but it's going to be really difficult to yeah. be successful. So be prepared to break a lot of pieces. So what have we done? Well, okay, yeah, watch, watch this, this transition. So, so Chris, what is this that we have right here? So what <laughs> was that? That was my, that was my QVC <laughs> exactly. intro. Like, what is this? So what I've been using for years on the acoustic front is this really nice LMI side bending jig. Um, it's really done me well, not cheap. I meant to look it up before we shot this video, but it's like in the $400 range. It could yeah. be more, I don't know. We interrupt this regularly scheduled programming to bring you this message. Uh, for those of you guys that have watched the Stumac video series that we were featured in, where we teach you how to paint a solid body electric guitar, many people are asking us about these bad boys. Paint handles, that's right. You saw these featured in that series. Uh, we're making these now. Yeah. Out of solid wood, we even have a nice uh, logo on there. So yeah, if you guys are interested, if you need a work holding solution for your own guitar while you're painting it, that's check right. out our website. And then also we have done many videos in the past uh, about tone woods that we have scoured the country for and brought back here and then resawed them. And I'm actually building a really nice acoustic guitar out of this awesome Brazilian rosewood that we got last year. If you're interested in buying some tone wood, not just Brazilian rosewood, but much more affordable woods as well, they can be found at driftwoodguitars.com slash tonewood. Nailed it. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what I, uh, Matt was out of town, John was out of town, and, and I'm trying to make this easier because part of the, part of the process here in, in the new Driftwood electric guitar shop that we're in now is, is mass production. Mass production, you know, yeah. <laughs> like batches of 20. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, yeah. and so I'm seeing Matt struggle, I'm seeing John struggle with, this, with bending uh, over the hot iron, and it's just like, God, what would you say? At least half of them are breaking, sometimes even more. Yeah. If you're yeah. John. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not that it's expensive, but it's just expensive on time front, right? Yeah. Uh, and I wanted Matt and John to get as much experience as possible and to experience that failure so that they can start to get better at it. And, and Matt started to really get it down, but even at, at full speed, it's like, there's got to be a better way. So in my mind, I thought, man, if we could turn this LMI side bender into a, a binding bender for the electrics, that would be killer. Knowing that coming up with a jig that could bend around the horn here was going to be quite the... Uh, quite the expedition and we actually I redesigned it and I ended up coming up with this 
neat little thing here. I'm just thinking later, like I'm I'm looking at this piece right here. I'm probably gonna stick like one of those pixelated things over while I'm editing this. It's pretty bad. Like, you where'd you go with the idea for that thing, dude? <laughs> yeah. yeah, not to scale. Uh, not to not scale. To scale. <laughs> uh, but so this actually clips onto here now and allows us an ability to bend our binding all the way around this horn and to hold it in place so that it cools off. So with that, what we're gonna do is uh is bend a bunch of binding on here so that you guys uh yeah, can i'm gonna see. learn this in real time yeah so, literally yeah, chris has already done this to prove a concept we know this works yeah but yeah. it was like teach me how to do it um and why not make a video on it so that you guys can do it and i think that i think that the big takeaway here is just the 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 morbid curiosity for folks at home are wondering how to bend wooden binding mm -hmm. uh and then for those of you at home are interested in building guitars um can see that this lmi side bender uh, while not full featured, can be modified to be full featured. That's right. And whether you're using this bender or the Fox side bender or any number of like, you know, the uh, Etsy style benders that are out there, you you can think outside the box, spend some time figuring out how to make it work for your needs. Uh, with that, I guess we'll uh, slide this out of the way. Oh boy. And uh, we'll kind of start making our sandwich here and uh, show you guys how we go about taking our binding and doing that. What we've done, and the thing I definitely recommend to folks, is that don't just make like two to four pieces of binding. Yeah, do you want to talk about one thing for one second? Can we talk about how awesome this is? <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, we made a, a binding storage thing for our French cleat wall that like... Yeah. Cleats, but this yeah, tube this came was... from like all of the, the T-track that we have on here. Yeah. So. so, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, but, what we, thanks you. <laughs> but what we do is we actually take um, just a... We get like one stick of maple, um, you know, I, I don't know, what do you think, probably, it's probably an inch thick by, you know, three, four inches wide. Give or take, you yeah. You know, we cut it into, usually we cut these into like um, 36 inch pieces, give or take, once again, it kind of doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a very inexact size. Yeah, the trick here <laughs> is to be able to bind the guitar out of wood and make that hard cutaway but still making it like narrow, thin enough mm -hmm. that it can actually make the cutaway. So what we've landed on, because I know people are gonna ask, is the thickness uh, on these is about 1.7, 1.8 millimeters uh, by seven millimeters tall. And if you don't know what that means, Google it. You're already on the internet. Like, it's right <laughs> <No>. there. <laughs> it's literally right there. <laughs> um, but that's what we found is a good compromise in our thickness to be able to make the hard cuts, the hard cutaways, uh, but still having enough meat on the bone so that once we kind of level the sides, once the binding's on, that there's still some binding left over. Mm -hmm. We're kind of rolling the dice here, if I'm honest. We are um, cutting, we're gonna actually bend the hardest bend that we can humanly do on camera and just hope that it works out in front of a live audience. This is some <laughs> real evil Knievel stuff right yeah. here. <laughs> so what do you think? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, let's do 10. Yeah. 10 um, sounds good. Because I'm thinking, how many guitars do we have left to do? If you, if you guys, please. If you guys, <laughs> yeah. if you guys would buy them all, then we would have... <laughs> yeah. What we do is we pick out, we've got 10 of them on here. We're gonna lay them nice and flat. And then what I like to do is I take some tape. We're gonna get them nice and lined up. We're gonna take some tape. Nothing special here. I use binding tape. And we're actually gonna lay them out nice and flat. The main reason we do this is just to keep them nice and organized as we do this. And yes, I know I'm sniffling, but I've got allergies, all right? If you watch this channel, you know. Would you say, welcome to Sniffle Guitars? Yeah, welcome to Sniffle Guitars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Sniffle McSniffle Face. Kleenex. <laughs> yeah, this episode brought to you by. <laughs> We've got our binding, 10 pieces nice and lined up. Uh, if you're doing two, you're doing four, you're doing 100 of them, same thing. Just tape them up, they're gonna look nice and good. Um, the main trick is once you cut, we're gonna make a sandwich here to use on the side bender, is to make sure that you don't have pieces of binding overlapping on one another with this. Right. Um, that is really key. The next thing you're gonna do, spray spray bottle. Uh, not a spray gun, as John made quite clear. Um, <laughs> I use uh, just filtered water here, um, reverse osmosis water. You can use regular water. My only concern with using regular water is you don't know, if, uh, especially from city water, what kind of mineral deposits you have uh, in it, and it can, it can stain the wood on rare occasions. It's, it's pretty rare, but uh, what I like to do is just, spray this down, I find that with maple, less is more when it comes to the water. Um, what you want to do... <laughs> you know I did that so perfect. <laughs> I, want to, I want to call you something right now, but the camera's on. <laughs> what you want to do is just get it nice and wet, but on maple, I don't like it to be soaked. I honestly don't. Why um, is that? Um, what I find is that if you take your maple and it's just sopping wet, it just wants to fall apart uh, when you kind of come around a hard corner. It, oh, it don't, wow. It's like, I don't know what it is. It, it's 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 just always never worked for like me Like it starts to kind of like tear apart fibrally? Yeah, like a, it does. Fibrally, um, what is that? Fibrously? <laughs> uh, yeah. So what I like to do is make it wet, 
you can already see how much more flexible it is but I don't have it dripping and I'm not gonna add a bunch of water to the um, aluminum foil that we're about to pull out whereas if I'm doing this out of um, if I'm doing ebony or mm -hmm. I'm doing rosewood this thing's just gonna be dripping uh, you just because you really want to use that steam uh, but that's just not the case with maple for some reason so what we gonna do is uh, I like to reuse the aluminum foil um, you know, why not, right? Yeah. Would you say? If it ain't broke. If it ain't broke. Yeah. Uh, important note, use your own aluminum foil. Don't use your spouse's aluminum foil. Uh, she will come in here and yell at you. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to wrap this in some foil. Wrap it up here. And then you're going to feel for it once it's in the aluminum foil. Make sure that you don't have any pieces, once again, overlapping one another. It just feels nice and flat. The next thing that you need to do is you need to find the measurement for the waist on your guitar. And by that, I mean the section here that we, we call the waist. Uh, let me grab something. I like to use this literal, uh, I guess this is like a true measuring tape, isn't it? Yeah, or like a seamstress. Tape. Yeah, it's like a seamstress style. Yeah. Have one of these in your shop if you're into guitar building because you just need them. Uh, because you can take them and measure around things like this. Uh, I like to take my measurement in centimeters because it's a little bit easier to remember. And now I know 28 and a half centimeters gives me the smack dab center of my cutaway or of my waist, and then I also like to figure out what the measurement is down here. And so that's six, gonna that's six, gonna help you know where to put it on the, like how to, how to orient it on the How to the orient thing. it on okay, the thing. Cool. 29 and a half, 28 and a half, we'll call it 29, uh, is my waist, and 69 is the, uh, nice. <laughs> the measurement down nice. here. So the, what I like to do is, so I know that 29 is gonna be my waist, and 69 is the end, but I have from here to here worth of binding. I always make my binding quite a bit larger than it needs to be. So I'm gonna kind of split the difference and put 69 a few inches from the end and zero a few inches from the end. You have a Sharpie on you? <laughs> no, hang on one second. <laughs> All right, All right. we got the Sharpie. I'm gonna mark uh, my 29 centimeter mark right here. Bada bang. And all that we're doing there is just giving us our mark for our, our waist location. And you'll see why that's important here in a second. The other reason why I like this side bender is because I'm not in a hurry right now. If I was using the, the bending iron that Matt showed you at the beginning here, because it's not wrapped in foil, that water's evaporating. So you're like constantly like in a hurry trying to keep make sure that the wood's not drying out. Well, and that's the purpose of the foil, right? Is so that it steams inside and it, exactly. it, the water doesn't escape. The way the side bender works is you make this cool sandwich. Uh, it's, you get this spring steel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hate you so much whenever I edit this later. <laughs> You've got spring steel on both sides and then this large uh, electronically controlled heating blanket, which is nice. So you get a lot of control. And then what you do, take your spring steel, you lay this bad boy in here. And I've got my, my Sharpie mark where I've laid my waist at. I've also got on my spring steel, you can barely see it. I've got another piece of, uh, of Sharpie on there. I'm going to line up those two so that I know that that's where my waist is going to go. And then what we do, let's bring this over here. We're gonna, I'm gonna do all this backwards, so it's gonna be such, such a pain. Yeah. <laughs> now I know how cooking shows feel. So I'm really trying to not move my binding inside of here. We are gonna take this and line up my, once again, my waist spot with it. Um, the other thing that we're gonna do, that's plugged in, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. yep. Is we've got a thermocouple, which is just basically a temperature probe. It's a fancy word for temperature probe. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna insert this basically right on top of the binding, right on the waist area, So, because I, I want to get an accurate reading. Uh, the very first thing we do before we even worry about the cutaway side or the lower bout section is the waist. The waist is always done first. It's also why it's important that you find that center location of where the waist is going to go, because if it's off, you know, if you've got too much binding material on this side, you're not going to have enough wood to, to wrap around the whole side there and vice versa on this side. So uh, that's why I like to make the binding quite a bit larger than I need it to be. You know, it just gives you some some room to work with. Um, what do I have this set at? I don't even know. 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, we are, uh, we're gonna use, I like to switch it up, Imperial metric, you guys know my thing. Uh, we're using 260 um, degrees Fahrenheit is what I like to be at on these. Um, and uh, I find that that's a nice sweet spot. I have yet to burn a piece of wood. Um, while this thing is heating up, I do wanna talk a little bit about how I like to do this. The Oh, I think a disadvantage to this setup versus doing it by hand is that you can't feel what the wood is telling you. Mm -hmm. You know, even for somebody who hasn't bent a lot of wood, you can still tell when the wood's about to break, right? Yeah. Like, you just know, oh my god, it's, I'm totally mm -hmm. going to break this piece of wood. With this, because there's all the spring steel and the heat blanket and all the things, you kind of lose that sensation of, of, of the wood telling you what it wants. So I kind of do it more just by uh, intuition. Um, but for the waist, what I like to do is I don't use the handle. Uh, I use just the, um, what do you 
got like a jack screw. I think that's what this is. Is it a jack screw? Yeah. I made that up. Uh, <laughs> Dude, but, uh, jack? <laughs> but what I do is I kind of get it till it feels kind of like it's pushing back a little bit, and then I stop, and then we're going to wait for this thing to get up to about 200. Was it Was it 206? 207? Is that boiling? Something yeah. like that. I always forget. And whenever you say like right about where it's about to stop, like... Where it's taking a little bit more pressure than I'd like it to do. Oh, okay. And the reason why I do it here and not here is because obviously there's leverage up here. Mm -hmm. Down here I can tell more yeah. what it's doing. Uh, but once it gets to about 200 degrees, I can start just slowly giving it more pressure. The reality of it is, I know this, is that this maple's not going to break for the waistband and probably we could just go and tighten it up. But for those of you at home, do it this way, it's better. Especially if you're trying to do this with figured woods. Okay, something I like to do as well is these little, I don't know, gator clamps? I don't even know. We get these from Stumac. We'll put a link in the description. Um, you can also get them at, you know, your local hardware store a lot of the times. But what I like to do <laughs> is just clamp this up so that I can go ahead and start preheating. Um, uh, so that I can start preheating this piece of wood and the same thing here. Oh, uh, here? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Work smarter, not harder. Yeah, and that's once again just to kind of start preheating that section. And I'm gonna go ahead and start applying. Where are we at here, temperature wise, John? 246. 246. So we're good. So at this point, I'm already pretty much down. Like I, I barely felt that. Right. Like mm -hmm. it's down. We're good to go. This is one of my favorite things about this, um, this LMI jig, though. Uh, you see this, and you go like, how does that work? This doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but it's super cool. This thing, this is only going to be for the lower bout in this case because of the cutaway. Um, if you're doing a non-cutaway instrument, if it's a, if it's a um, like an acoustic guitar or an electric without a cutaway, I don't know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> I guess like an arch top. Um, you would have the same sort of situation on the upper bout. But what's cool about it is you just kind of go like this, and it just walks itself down. Because this is such a broad radius. Yeah, give it a try. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, nice. you're, you're feeling a lot of pressure, but most of that pressure is just mechanical resistance, like from right. the, whole, the whole rig. It's not really the wood. So um, I noticed can, right there, the, it looked like the spring steel was backing it's out. It's the bow up, um, which is fine yeah. uh, in this case. It's just because it's this is new. When these are brand new, these molds, mm -hmm. they tend to they take a little couple tries before they really start to loosen up. Break, and, break in. Yeah, and bend the way you want. Just let it rip. Oh, let it rip? Okay. Normally, I would suggest against that, but this is such a wide bend for the lower bout, and it's also... Um, Did you see a bowing up there? It's, yeah. it's, actually, it's actually that. But it's such a gradual bend, and this is non-figured wood. I know from past experience that it's not going to have any issues, so that's why I let him do that so quickly. But now comes the fun part. I'm actually going to turn this off for just a second while we kind of maybe move some cameras around, but we're going to do the upper bout here, and uh, I'm turning it off because I don't want to let it very much steam come out of here. Um, so let's get a camera kind of resituated. I want to show you the mad science that we did over here for the upper bout. All right, before we get to bending, I wanted to give you guys just a better shot of what I did here. Um, this inside section is what's going to actually match the inside radius of the cutaway on this guitar minus the thickness of the heat blanket and the spring steel and the binding itself. And then these two outside phallic pieces um, are actually <laughs> designed to, to lock into the side bender. This is the best way that I could come up with this outside of attaching another jack screw to this and pushing in on here, which is the way that I see most people do um, cutaway side benders. But on our, we've done this twice and it's worked out well. So with that, let me load this thing up. And this is gonna be once again, a little awkward just because of, how, how's this work? <laughs> okay, okay, there we go, there yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got this. Let me find a, let me find the hole here. I swear to God, this never happens. Yeah, here. Hey, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now this is on here. How many luthiers just take screw a light bulb? <laughs> now I need to turn the heat blanket bag on. Somewhere. There we go. Okay. We really want to make sure we get this nice and hot now because we're going to stress the crap out of this wood. Okay. This is a high risk deal here. Um, and that's why we loaded 10 pieces in here. I'm happy if we get five usable ones. Um, but the, the, the name of the game here is going to be patience, honestly. Uh, the last time I did this, I ended up, we, we broke quite a few, but I think, I just, I, think I just went a little too quick. Yeah. So what we're going to do is let this guy get back up over, over 220. As long as I'm above that, I'm kind of happy. And then uh, we're gonna, you're going to do it, right, Matt? I'd like to. Yeah. We're going to have Matt do it. We're just going to slowly start applying pressure to this and peeling this thing around. Once it's all the way around, we're going to stick another dowel in it, and it's going to lock it in place. And it's going to be that easy. So just start pushing it down and start applying pressure here. And you can even just push right from the top. Uh, 
then I would kind of hang out. And then you're gonna get a little bit more. My only concern here is I'm not seeing much steam coming out of this. <laughs> but hmm. that's all right, we're gonna yeah. give it a try. Yeah, keep going, whatever you feel comfortable with. You've bent plenty of binding, just not yeah. with this jig. Um, well, I mean, I'm, oh, there, I got steam coming on now. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see a lot of steam, so that's good. And you do, you wanna make sure that out of the end of your um, aluminum foil that you still have steam coming out of it. That's gonna tell you that there's still moisture locked in there, which you need. So go a little faster than this, Matt. Okay. Because it's funny, I think I remember the last time that we did this, we had um, the issues that was always around. Always on the inside. Yeah, it was always So on the something inside, I have so. done, you'll see, is that this part here, I actually angled down for this one. I actually removed some wood because we had some binding issues. See what I did there? The binding bound up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> nope. You're doing good. Nice and, just nice and steady, but slow yeah. and intentional. It smells like it's hot maple. I said, or uh, there's kind of a pasta vibe to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, getting... it does. It's starchy. Yeah. It might be because I'm hungry too. It's almost lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> and now, it's still steamy. Now, would you ever consider taking pressure off of this and like, and then reapplying it? No, like, I wouldn't no? do that. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything, but constant, steady pressure is good. This we need to come up with a way to, like we can have this on like a, a, a screw of sorts. But yeah, this works good. So now what's gonna start happening? You just keep doing your thing, Matt. Uh huh. Is it's gonna start to kind of hit down here, and so now you're gonna start doing a double bend because you're bending this. Upper, right. upper section and you're also bending this lower section. It can start to get a little sporty. Um, and I'll apply a little bit of lift to that so it'll go easier. But you're doing good. I'd go a little more, yeah. Snap! Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds awful. Yeah, it really does. It sounds like it's like cracking every two seconds. Uh huh. Something I've learned that I really like since we did the shopping mall is I love making tools. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun. Intensely satisfying. There's two types of luthiers. There's the ones that are like, ugh, I gotta make all these jigs just to build the guitar. But I'm like, dude, we get to make all the jigs to build the guitar. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think it's, uh, you know, you can you can buy food or you can grow food. That's right. Um, the old teach a man the fish thing. Yeah. Okay, keep going. It's looking really good. Uh, the nice thing is you can see, you're not going to see it on camera, but you can look between the slats of uh, spring steel and see the aluminum foil. And, and just what you're looking for is to make sure that it's it's bending smoothly. You don't want it to be like bump, 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 because if it's doing that, that means it's kind of cracking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, looking good, Miller. And we are. Basic, <coughs> excuse me, we are basically out of steam, so we're kind of bending dry wood now, which is, we'll survive. Yeah. Um, certain species of woods do not bend dry, like ebony. If you're bending ebony, you want this just dripping wet. Uh, just out of curiosity, what would happen then? Would you just pull it out and re wet it, or? I honestly. <laughs> problem is, is that once it's got a bend in it, you can't reapply the aluminum foil. Ah, uh, right. So it's kind of you get it right or you don't do it at all. Are you good down that? Yeah, oh, you're almost, almost there. Almost there. So once he gets this all the way around, I have another hole inside the mold here. And we're gonna try to... Gravity. This thing is not the right size. <laughs> oh my another... god, I've got a maple one, or another wooden one. That's fine, I'm just gonna stand here and hold this thing. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, take your time. Take I your time, Chris. I know I need <laughs> There we go. Come down a little bit with it. No? Oh, oh. It's fine! <laughs> There it goes. All right. All right. Cool. Now you can let go. So now... <laughs> <I'm exhausted. laughs> yeah. Um, so that's pretty much good to go at this point. What we're going to do is I'm going to let it uh, kind of... I kind of like think of this process here as like an annealing process. Okay. Uh, I like to let it sit for a few minutes at full temperature. Um, and then I'm going to switch this off. What I love about side benders, machines like this versus doing it by hand, and I think this is super crucial to getting good bending or good binding bend is, uh, words, uh, <laughs> is, uh, is that this thing slowly cools it off. Uh, yeah. And that seems to make a huge difference in uh, whether you're doing sides or you're doing binding. When we go to pull this thing out of here, uh, since it's slowly cooled off to room temperature, it doesn't spring back very much at all. It pretty much holds its shape. For those of you that have bent wood with a bending iron, the hand style, you know that like you'll get it where you want it and then you walk back out in your shop an hour later and it's like, 40% back to its original shape. <laughs> right. Um, so what we gonna do is flip this switch off. Um, we're gonna get some lunch and then show you guys what this looks like. I think we're doing chili dogs. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
So we'll be back. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Chili dogged up, right? Yep. We're chili dogged up. Yeah. Feeling good. Feeling what, like a nap. Yeah, no doubt. This is lowered back basically to room temperature. It's below 100 degrees, 96 degrees is fine. Uh, and I think we can go ahead and pull it out and uh, see if we messed it up or not. Hey. <laughs> so I'll push down on this. Okay. Give her the beans. We're going to have to wallow that out, I think. Yeah, or just sand it a little bit. There, there, it, goes. there it goes. Let the record show that John, who's behind the camera, Confidence level's pretty low that this is gonna work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is looking really good, dude. I would have died last though if that had been. Yeah. This is not. A, I'm not a crack in this. This is not a crack in. Let's see. He's calling it. He's calling, calling it. His, he's calling his shots where he even makes them. <laughs> you bent it, not me. Yeah. Buddy. Oh, dude. Ten out of ten. A uh, little bit of, uh, very little, um, kind of like squaring off on that one. Yeah. Um, on this one, this is, I think, pretty much the worst one out of the whole batch. I think it's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just on this inside radius, it kind of squared off, and if I apply a little bit of pressure to it, it's going to want to break. Um, so that's that's the kind of thing that you're going to see on these, um, where those where those problem areas are. Uh, but those all look really nice there, huh? Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are too. A couple little tiny issues with some yeah. of them, where the inside radiuses are. But so, you know, we probably got eight or nine in here that are going to work really well. Um, and most importantly, now these will just go in here and fit nice. And for our high production uh, purposes, these are going to be really nice because we can bend up, you know, 15, 20, 30. We could probably do close to 30 in one bend. Mm -hmm. All right, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, we've got these guitars coming for sale here, hopefully, uh, in the not-too-distant future. And, um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next one. Yeah. Thanks.